Chalk Talk edition number two comes with a lot better mood than week one where the Seahawks just fell short in Arizona. Very different effort against Dallas. They thumped Dallas and especially physically in the second half. And to me, this may have been the biggest play of the game uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, at this point, this is in the third quarter and it's 13 to seven. This is a part of the 90 play drive where the Seahawks ran it right down Dallas's throat. And this was the biggest run of the day. And it did a number of things as I'm gonna get to here and break down in this Chalk Talk. Uh, first of all, this formation, I think we better get familiar with as Seahawks fans, and you should be a little familiar with and, and should recognize this because this is a lot of what the Seahawks used when they got to the Super Bowl back in 2005. This was Max Strong and Sean Alexander. This was Bobby Ingram. It was a two-back set with three wide receivers, and in every West Coast terminology, they call that E. Doug Baldwin's the tight end, and that's just called an E instead of a Y because he's a tight end, but it's E personnel. It's green left, which is the I formation in the West Coast vocabulary, in a, in a play that you go back to 2005 and look at the number of times the Seahawks got into this formation and, and used a run-pass mix and used what they called their blast or their lead play a little different with this group. They're not as much lead downhill as they are zone, but the execution was fantastic. Why it was the biggest play in the game for me, not just because it was 13-7, but this was the first time really in two games that the Seahawks took the blitz to the other team. And what I mean by that, as much as Arizona played man and brought everybody the Seahawks never made that play to get Arizona out of it. They didn't make that big play. They didn't have that threat in the run game, the, 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 the threat that for Ray Horton, the D coordinator at Arizona, goes, ooh, I don't know if I'm going to go back to that blitz because if I just miss it, they're going to make me pay. Well, they made him pay. This was a 36-yard run by Marshawn Lynch. And let me start off first with a term that you're going to hear and you've heard in football called cover zero. Cover zero just means when it's said and done and when everybody rotates, there are zero safeties left in the middle of the field. Instead of two deep, two safeties, or a single safety that you'll hear a lot with either three deep or man free, this gets to cover zero. It gets to cover zero, why? Because Rob Ryan decided at this juncture, a second down play to bring the pressure. He brings DeMarcus, DeMarcus Ware off of the strong side with the tight end. He also brings the strong safety and in so doing, because of that, the free safety, and he's late and he disguises and covers it up pretty well, but ultimately he's got to come over because he's got responsibility with Doug Baldwin and man. You got your corners locked up, cover zero, they're, they're man on man, they got to make their play. And what an enormous play and opportunity for the Seahawks because they took that cover zero and they ran away from this blitz. If they had this zone run called into the blitz, it's zero, it's minus two, it's dead. Instead, they get to the line of scrimmage. Russell Wilson sees it. They got the play called away from the strength anyway. And I'm sure Russell's sinking and Marshawn's sinking. Boy, I hope that blitz is coming because these two just run themselves out of the play. You don't even have to account for these. And that's the advantage when you get cover zero and you get blitz, you have got to make them pay. They run themselves out of the play and they blitz. Why? Well, because the run comes this way for the Seahawks. And instead of that blast concept, okay, and quickly here in the blast concept, they would have just left Mac Strong to block that linebacker one-on-one. -on -one. Instead, with all of the zone run that the Seahawks do, Okay, they get a good double team with Moffitt and Giacomini and they just blow this end out right into the linebacker and he's blind, he has no idea. So he comes off and he also, this is all zone, so they're all zoning this way, taking care of their zone. Uh, the left tackle does a nice job, McQuiston hangs on to Carter enough, Unger does a nice job on the nose. And Moffitt not only pushes at the point of attack in the zone concept, he can feel the linebacker, he nudges him, and you actually get a double team on this linebacker creating that crease for Marshawn, and that's all he needs. You took their cover zero and their people out of position and you maximized it. And secondly, and this is huge, and we're gonna see this throughout the year, when you come and try to arm tackle beast mode, and uh, Moose Johnson said it, when you arm tackle him, that's all these guys have to do, is just get him in a position to arm tackle. And his arm, and his arm, and ultimately the safety who came down, his arm, not good enough. Because Marshawn is gonna beat arm tackles, and then lastly, and we saw this all year a season ago, 
I love the finish. I love the finish of Sidney Rice. I love the finish of Doug Baldwin. I love the finish of Golden Tate. They're all working. They're all churning. Why? Because they know if they can get this guy arm tackles, if they can get that crease, if they can beat cover zero, do you think you saw much cover zero as that game evolved after that point? Not nearly as much as you saw beforehand. Not nearly as much the week before. And when Green Bay comes in on Monday night and they try to run that cover zero, boy, you hope you can get a run play right away from that blitz, get a seam, and let beast mode do his thing.